All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a Discipleship Training Session. Um, so we are going to kick off with the definition of sins of commission and omission, just so we have it clean for the recording and the YouTube. Yes. Uh, huh? Yeah. Oh. You know what? You got to go sit down. I know. There. <laughs> <laughs> I like YouTube, but I, I put it on YouTube. Okay. Um, so, a sin of commission is an instruction or command given to a person. Therefore, sins of commission is to intentionally disobey the commands of God. For example, to know fornication is a sin, but one decides to intentionally practice fornication, you are committing a sin of commission and would calling that a transgression also be applicable. So calling that a transgression um, is another word for that. Okay, a sin of omission is a failure to do something you have a moral obligation to do. Neglect, exclude, or leave undone. Therefore, sins of omission are to fail or neglect to do something God commands, i.e., or for example, to fail to do good when it is in your power to do good is sin. For an example, we know that in James, I believe, we are commanded as an example, to show our faith through action. If someone asks you who is in a impoverished situation for you know, a coat, some clothes, something to eat, and it is in your power to give it to that person, and you do not, that would be a sin of omission. Everybody clear there? Okay, and then what we were talking about last week that separates from that is growing in your capacity and your skill set. So... We know that we have the power to heal our bodies through the power of the Holy Spirit. But that is not something that's just flipped and switching. You're good and you're manifesting and you're executing without any growing pains. What we were talking about is using the Holy Spirit, studying the Word of God, meditating to grow in that skill set, to increase in that capacity to be able to consistently execute that one power that comes through the Holy Spirit, and that goes for everything that we have access to through the Holy Spirit, discernment, uh, knowledge, hearing the word of God, all of that comes with consistent practicing to increase our proficiency in performing it. Everybody good? Question. So when it comes to sin of omission, okay, so do you say the, the definition again? Yep. Failure to do something you have a moral obligation to do. Neglect, exclude, or leave undone. Therefore, sins of omission are to fail or neglect to do something that God commands. Okay. I'm trying to ask this as simple as possible. Can you, can you ask for forgiveness or okay, the repentance part of that? How would that work? Or am I thinking of commission? No, so you have to repent from sin, uh-huh. period. Right. Whether that's commission or omission. What repentance would look like for omission is when you are getting the knowledge, right? Because remember, omission is unintentional. Right. Okay. Or I neglected to do a duty. The repentance of that would be, Lord, I have the knowledge now that that's what I should be doing. Forgive me for not doing it. Okay. Going forward, I will not neglect this duty again. Okay. So a good example would be, as I'm learning more and more financially about, you know, when, like, I, I, we should be doing things to help the poor. So, I don't know, for me, that message just kept coming to me. So I'm like, okay, so I am failing to do something that I should be doing. I am omitting doing a commandment of God. It's not intentional. It just was really not on my radar. So now that the Lord has constantly been bringing this message to me and put it on my radar, what I have determined to do is, because we already give tithe and we already give offering. The tithe I'm giving here, the offering, I just take that, I get a bunch of cash, keep it in my car, and as I drive around, I hand it out to homeless people. So now, 
I am constantly putting myself in a routine to give to the poor. And of course, I always give to Salvation Army and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I could have been doing more because the Lord just kept bringing that message to me. So now I'm doing that. And now I'm not omitting to provide for the poor as I should have been doing something to put that in my, my routine. It was just it was just absent from my routine. Okay. In my mindset. Not on purpose. It just wasn't on my radar. No, I got you. Okay. Yeah. I was about to say it too, it's not really not in a bad way it's yeah. talked about enough. So yeah. I think it's just overlooked. Yeah. So that's probably why the Lord just yeah. brought it to you. Yep. Was a, a, like helping the home. Yeah. yeah helping not like the poor. In a bad the way. needy, yeah. poor, yeah. needy, yep. Yeah. Right. It's just overlooked because you go about your day to day life. Yeah. It's like you're not really paying attention. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm just curious. Yeah. <laughs> and when we just, well, I just ask the question. And then if someone were to have a sin of omission become present in their life and they realize it's omission, if they continued it, then it would become a sin of commission. Right. Correct. Yeah. Good. For making that point. Yeah. Based on how you sent the email, that's how I was like, okay, that makes sense. So, okay, cool. Screenshot it. Yeah. Cool. And how I've been basically using the keywords in the definition. Commission is intentional. Omission is unintentional. Commission is malicious. Omission is unmalicious. Like tying it to the heart posture, the behavior that goes behind that action. Yeah. Um, so that's helped me a lot in, in like solidifying the definition in my mind. Yeah. Okay. So any other questions? Everybody good? All right. So now... We will pick up talking up, uh, continuing the series on the framework of discipleship. So we've been talking about instruction, and what we we started talking about this last week. Did we start talking about this last week? Yeah, I think it was last week when we first started talking about, about what? No. <laughs> instruction. We started. We didn't okay. Um, to instruct someone properly in the Word of God, what we've been talking about starting last week is instilling what the knowledge, understanding, and wisdom of God actually is. So when you begin to read through the scripture, you're applying and operating in the knowledge, understanding, and wisdom of God rather than the worldly, the worldview or dictionary application or definition of what that word is. And as we've seen already, you start to miss a lot of context when you're not defining terms in the way God has defined them. Um, so we were talking about understanding in Hebrew. We looked at, I believe, two. Uh, bana, which is a noun, meaning to grasp, meaning faculty, proficiency, capacity, or competence. Taboon, which is another noun, intelligence, insight, and also faculty or proficiency, capacity, and competence. What we are going to pick up with today is ben, which is a verb, meaning, yep, ben which is a verb, which is to discern, be skillful, observe, mark, give heed to, distinguish, consider. So let's go to 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9. Once again, that is 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9. What version? New King James Version, sorry. That is in the New King James Version. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil, for who is able to judge this great people of yours? So what is being said is, give me a skillful heart, an observant heart, a distinguishing heart. That can only come from the Lord, right? Give me the understanding that I need to be able to discern between good and evil, both from a moral standpoint, but also from an individual, right? Like, give me the discernment to be able to look and, and grasp the information that is not, right, easily seen, easily known, right? It's not only appearance, but the heart, the character. That's what I need as a leader, all right, let's go to Job chapter 6, verse 24 in the New King James Version. That is Job chapter 6, verse 24. <laughs> T 
Teach me and I will hold my tongue. Cause me to understand wherein I have erred or made a mistake or fallen short. What is so interesting about this is, as we talked about last week, when we're looking at knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, we've seen the noun, the definition of the thing, the noun, contains action. Then we see this thing in action. Teach me and I will hold my tongue. Cause me to understand wherein I've erred. Give heed to, distinguish, consider. It is not just enough for me to comprehend where I erred. But so I can fix it so I don't make the same mistake. And this is what, as disciples, we have to instill that understanding into those we disciple. It is not enough just for you to comprehend, right? Oh, I get it. The point of comprehension is to prevent you from making the same mistake again. What is the point of understanding where I messed up if you're just going to go and do it again? (laughs) That's what scripture says. And all thy getting... Get an understanding. The point of this is for you to comprehend, to observe, in order to give heed. To be like, got it, Lord. I will not make that mistake again. But oftentimes, what we've seen in just teaching in general, in this age of the body of Christ, it is just folks like to comprehend in the sense of, I know that's what scripture says. I know that was, that's what scripture says. Oh, I understand that passage of scripture. Okay, you're comprehending it, but are you applying it? Because that is, through, the, through God's lens, that is true comprehension, is that, oh, you're applying it. If you're not, from God's perspective, you do not understand. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. All right, let's go to one more example. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. Oh, sorry. Question. Go ahead. Andrew, you had a question. Andrew forgot the question. I know uh, I was about. Can you repeat what you you remember what you said last? Yes, that um, through the eyes of God, if you are not applying the word of God, you are not comprehending the word of God. Okay, in that situation, how would you know you're applying the word of God? Is it by what would manifest? So it could be in different things, right? So in terms of what we're just in terms of this specific scripture. Job is speaking of, show me where I messed up, okay. right? So then I can apply, so I can fix it and apply your word that is telling me I shouldn't be doing this or telling me where I messed up. When it comes to our individual lives, scripture, just using the, the simple example we use for sin and commission, scripture says, you know, not to fornicate. Mm-hmm. I, I comprehend the definition of fornication, meaning sex outside of marriage. Well, are you applying it to your life? No, I'm still fornicating. Through God's perspective, then you do not comprehend my word because understanding my word means that you do not make that mistake. That you do not, I should say, you do not operate in that because we all make mistakes. They don't want to, right. no one is sinless. But it's talking about lifestyle. So if you are continuing in this lifestyle that I have told you not to operate in and you say you understand that, then why are you not applying it? So using a simpler example, If I taught you algebra, right, simple algebra, and you say, okay, Donovan, I got it. Okay, here are some examples. Fill in in the equations. And you couldn't do it. Well, then, Andrew, you ain't got it. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Just an example. Uh, Somebody said they're a believer. Mm -hmm. But they actually say, but... Like, but I feel like it should go this way. That makes them no one saying like, oh, but I feel like gay marriage should happen. Then you don't have comprehension okay, through okay. the eyes of God. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm getting it. It's, I know it's going to slowly come, but I'm, I'm yep. getting it. Yep. So through the eyes of God, okay. it is taking his word and applying it to your life. That is understanding. Okay. So for me to say I believe, mm-hmm. but I feel as though gay marriage should be allowed. Well, the word of God says that homosexuality is an abomination to him. So that comprehension, carrying that through, 
God's precept, his principle, his commandment is that we are not to operate into homosexuality and homosexuality is an abomination. Therefore, gay marriage in the eyes of God is an abomination. Does that make more sense? Yes. You want to add anything to that? Yeah. So that's through the eyes of God. That is what comprehension is. You're applying it. It's not enough to just know it's in there and I know where to find it. And I know the definition of the terms and I get the context. Okay, great. Once again, you'll be phenomenal at biblical trivia. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're not living this, you do not feel it fully comprehend. But this also can apply to what we were talking about in terms of godly skill sets. From that perspective, it is not a sin, right? Like I'm just now getting into this law of manifestation and understanding that, oh, I have access to healing through faith. Oh, Faith is putting corresponding action to the word of God. I got it now. I'm applying it. The Lord is now, okay, now you're, now you're getting it because you're making the steps to apply it. And that's why we said when we're looking at knowledge, wisdom, and understanding through the eyes of God, it is all about action. It is dynamic. It is not a static definition, meaning it is just something for you to know. It is something for you to get and regurgitate. No, if you are not applying it, you do not comprehend it. Yeah. All right. That came to mind. Um, I was in Bible class with Adriana. She made a good point. So maybe one day we'll do this. She said we should get shirts that say listen to obey. Because it's just like that's the resounding thing that's been ringing. I think yeah. through a lot of people's minds, students here, is that we're starting to get it that you need to listen to the word of God so that you're obeying it. Yeah. Not I, I know it, I can quote it, I can tell you about it. Because like you say, you'll be great at Bible trivia. But if you really understand what God is saying, then you would be applying that in your daily life. And a lot of people aren't. Okay. Yeah. And if someone asks me financial advice, my first thing, and it's just an example, well, do you tithe? No, I don't believe in the tithe. Well, the Lord said the tithe was established before the law. Abraham tithed before the law. There's no, nothing in scripture that tells you that we should not be tithing. You should give your tithe. And I, just based on that one principle, your financial success will increase. Okay, good. Thanks, Donovan. I got it. Six months later, Donovan, I'm in the same spot. Did you tithe? No. Nah, then you didn't get it. <laughs> because exact, what's the point? Of me giving you information. That you're not going to you, Yeah, that you're not going to plot. That's not comprehension. And we can see that in anything. When, when you go to school and you're taught something, you are then tested to gauge your comprehension. But when it comes to the things of God, we act dumbfounded. <laughs> like, oh, though I didn't mean, I didn't know you meant for me to actually do it. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling here as to how this was lost in translation. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just telling you stuff to be telling you. No, it's about doing it. All right, let's go to Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. And this is why, and this is right here is going to blow your mind. This is why the word of God, part of it, when we're talking about it is living, Right? It's because when you look at anything as it pertains to God in Scripture, it is moving. It is changing in the terms of character, in the terms of how it's supposed to reflect into our life, how it's supposed to renew our mind. Think about all the terms you know about what the Word of God does. It is dynamic. Yeah. So anything that anyone tells you as it pertains to the Word of God, if, that is, if it is static, and if, it's, if it is stale, if it doesn't drive you to action, that is not the word of God. Because everything that the word of God tells us to do, it is about forward momentum. Right? Be ye separate. Well, in order to do that, I have to separate myself. Yeah. Renew your mind. Well, in order to do that, I have to rely on the word of God. Repent and show fruit. That is in line with repentance. Well, in order to do that, that means I have to change some things about my behavior. Avoid temptation. Well, in order to do, there is something for me to do. And we're seeing that in knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. And this is why this instruction is so important when you're discipling someone is to get in their mind 
that if I am becoming stale, if I'm becoming static, I'm missing something because that is not the word of God. All right, you had, oh, everybody good? Okay, so Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. A man's steps are of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? So, our steps are ordered by the Lord. Our steps are designed by God. Right? He has intentionality when it comes to the direction of our life. If it is coming from God, how can man separately, that is what this is talking about, how can man separately comprehend discern, observe, give, give heed to distinguish his own way, separate from God. It is impossible. Once again, talking about that comprehension to take action. The Lord has ordered our footsteps. How can I as an individual person then comprehend the mind of God separate from him? You cannot. So then what I got to do? Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. This is why. That's why it is so when you truly start to just, just peel back the onions of language, right? Like I'm not even talking about like biblical principle, just language in the Bible. Just that in and of itself is so rich. So that's why when I see these very basic sermons and these very basic lessons and these very just basic concepts that people are teaching it's there is so much richness like we don't even have to get into the principles i can just walk you through definitions <laughs> and your revelation will increase through the holy spirit just because it's like oh now i get it because i know what that word is defined as right and this is all the things that come as a part of instruction as a disciple. We know that as an, in the office of teacher, there are going to be deeper revelations, right? There's a deeper skill set to be able to bring these things to light. But as a disciple, because we are all called to disciple, this is also my duty. Is I got to make sure that I am instructing whoever I'm discipling into the into the word of God. I'm part of this village that is raising this child of God into a son of God, a babe in Christ to a son of God. That maturity, I have a role to play in that as a disciple. All right, any thoughts, comments, or questions before we go to the next word? All right, so we're still in Hebrew. And so I said, like, the Hebrew language is so rich. We're still in Hebrew, and we're only talking about one word. <laughs> All right, so the next word is sakal, and it is a verb. It is to have insight, have comprehension. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 29, and then we're going to jump to verse 44 through 47 in the New King James Version. So once again, that is Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 29. Then we're going to jump to verses 44 through 47 in the New King James Version. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. This is talking in past tense, that they would have gotten this insight, that they would have gotten this comprehension. Let's go to verse 44 through 47. So Moses came with Joshua, the son of Nun, and spoke all the words of this song in the hearing of the people. Moses finished speaking all these words to all Israel, and he said to them, Set your hearts on all the words which I testify among you today, which you shall command your children to be careful to observe. All the words of this law, for it is not a futile thing for you, because it is your life. And by this word, you shall prolong your days in the land which you cross over to the jo cross over the Jordan to possess. To have insight, to have comprehension. Moses was crying out and said, oh, if you if only y'all had already had this. 
you had already gotten this, right? We would be so much further <laughs> along than we are now. So we can also see in Hebrew that comprehension reflects back as well as forward, right? I need to understand what I did before so I don't repeat the same mistakes as I move forward, right? So taking from the past to the present to the future tense. All right, the last one in Hebrew, and this is also a verb, is sama, and that is to hear. Listen to obey, to hear with attention or interest. Listen to comprehend. Let's go to Genesis chapter 11, verse 7 in the King James Version. That is Genesis chapter 11, verse 7 in the King James Version. All right, scroll down. Oh, sorry. It's a yeah. delay too, so when I type, they don't see it right. Well. Got it. That works. Genesis chapter 11, verse 7 in the King James Version. Go to, let us go down, and therefore confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So this is talking about the Tower of Babel, where they were building up to get to God. And the Lord was like, okay, they clearly are dead set on doing this. Let's go down there, and we're going to mess up their speech, right? But that may not understand, is so they would not be able to listen to obey. They wouldn't be able to attentively listen. They wouldn't be able to comprehend each other through listening, taking an action, that understanding, right? It's, they now would be static. They could not move forward. They cannot take action because we have confounded their language. They are unable to give each other commandments to listen to. Let's go to verse, uh, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9. So that's 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9. And we're going back to the New King James Version. So before we looked at discern, Sama is also used in this passage of Scripture. So 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9, in the New King James Version, we looked at Ben, that was the word discern in this passage of Scripture. We're now going to see a second Hebrew word for the same word but different meaning in the term understanding. So therefore give to your servant an understanding heart. A sama heart, meaning that I listen to obey. I hear with intention or interest. I listen to comprehend. So therefore, give your servant a sama heart to judge your people that I may discern. That is been. So I will be skillful that I will observe that I will be able to distinguish between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? So going back to understanding, that is Sama. Give me a heart to listen, to obey, to hear with attention or interest. How many people do we interact on a daily given verse, a daily given, uh, on a daily basis that do not listen with intention or interest? That's most people. Most people, right? (laughs) Most people are literally, they're listening to what's going to trigger them to respond. Mm -hmm. Or for you to, or not at all, and just, okay, Sound is no longer coming out of her mouth. So I'm going to say what I was going to say regardless. (laughs) Right? Understanding, Sama, is about hearing with intention. Interest. And this is, going back to it, this is what the Lord wants from us. The part of the understanding is, are you listening to obey? When, When the Lord speaks, do you have a heart of understanding? A heart of Sama. Are you listening with intention and interest that I actually care what you were saying. Let's look at another one. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 11. And we're staying in the New King James Version. So that is 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 11 in the New King James Version. Then God said to him, because you have asked this thing and have not asked long life for yourself, nor have asked riches for yourself, nor have asked the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. 
discern right there is sama. Think about that now, right? So what sama is defined as is an action word. It's a verb. To hear. To listen to obey. To hear with intention. To listen to comprehend. So that you can listen to comprehend justice. So that you listen to obey justice. That you listen with attention and interest for justice. Right? It's not just discerning from good and evil. Right? As we saw in verse 9. And just for the context, this is talking about um, King Solomon and his prayer to the Lord for wisdom. This is why we see so many knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Because that's what the conversation is about. But even in this, understanding to discern, two separate words, Hebrew, right? Sure, I should say two separate definitions, same word. Because people will look at this and be like, how is understanding and discerning the same thing? But because in Hebrew, <laughs> there are multiple definitions for one word. So we see it right here. That understanding is talking about comprehension. But that discernment is talking about your heart posture. When you hear something, are you listening with the intention to obey it, to respond correctly? That's what God was saying about Solomon. Your prayer is that you, you want your heart to be in the right place. To listen for justice for the people that I am placing you over as king. To obey justice. That's, how, dude, that's what we should want the Lord to say about us. And when we're instructing disciples, this is the nuance that we have to get them to understand, right? These different terms, knowledge and understanding and wisdom. It is not what you learned in Sunday school years ago. It is not what you learned by reading the dictionary. It is all about our heart and how we are positioning ourselves to receive from the Lord to then apply it. So as I'm discipling you, that's the mindset you should have. Me comprehending this isn't just, oh, I'm remember the answer if Donovan or Chimiko or Andrew or Trey or Leah or Nefertiri ask me about it again. No, I'm taking it and I'm applying it to my life. So the next time we have this conversation is, yeah, I remember you said do X, Y, and Z, and I did, and this is what I saw. All right, let's look at another example. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 15, verse 32 in the New King James Version. That is Proverbs chapter 15, verse 32 in the King James Version. He that refuses instruction despises his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. Heareth, in this passage of scripture, is Sama. Same word, two definitions. So understanding in this scripture is talking about comprehension. But hear it is talking about listening to obey, to hear with intention or interest, listen to comprehend. But he that heareth reproof is not just you heard me speak to you, yeah. your heart posture. What is your intention in listening to me? Is it to obey me or is it just going to go in one ear or out the other? Right? Because I mean, I'm just, yeah, when I was a teenager, I used to say that to my parents all the time. Yeah, I heard you. No, I didn't. <laughs> I just want you to stop talking to me. <laughs> and then, Donovan, I told you to do. Shh. I wasn't listening. <laughs> My heart posture. I didn't care nothing about what you were saying. I was too busy doing what I wanted to do in that moment. And you were, and you were bothering me. You were a distraction, so I tuned you out. From the eyes of God, the person whose heart posture is to listen to obey, reproof. That is the person that's going to get comprehension. Why? Because comprehension means you are applying it. If you are not listening to obey it, you will not comprehend it because you ain't going to do it. You see how it all ties together? But if we're not teaching this, if we're not instructing this to the folks we're discipling, whoop, right over the head. Right? Because now I can start connecting this to other aspects of Scripture. So when Jesus said, when Christ was here walking, he said, he who has a ear, let him hear. 
this is what he was talking about. Because everybody else, yeah, listen to obey. Everybody else is like, yeah, I got two ears right here, Jesus. <laughs> I can hear you loud, clear. I, uh, I'm not deaf. No, he who has the heart to listen to obey, to listen, to comprehend to, with attention or interest, that person who has that ear, let him hear. Why? Because you're going to put corresponding action. <laughs> right? That is what this is talking about. So when we're actually defining terms the way God is designed it to be defined, we start connecting so many other dots that we think are not connected. And that's why it's so important for instruction. This is why it is so important. And like I said, simple lesson in, its, in the sense that we are just going through terms, but the revelation is compounded. For me to speak to you and comprehend, we have to be speaking the same language. The reason we all now can have a conversation is because we all speak English. And that's what the Lord is saying. Y'all not speaking my language. And I'm not specifically talking about Hebrew or Aramaic. You're not defined, you're using the world to define my terms. <laughs> so you're missing it. We're we not, we not in a groove because you're not speaking my language. That's the point of instruction. That is truly the point of it. I need, to, I need to instruct you in the language of God. Because when he speaks, now you're going to understand. You're going to be able to respond. You're going to be able to take action. The church today does not instruct in the language of God. We send them to Sunday school. You got this prescribed pamphlet and book of 16 weeks of what they're going to do. We send them the Bible study. It's very rudimentary, very simple. We come on Sunday, very rudimentary and simple because it has to come to a general audience. Rinse and repeat. So then, when we come encounter someone like this, well, you know, I, I haven't spoken tongues in, in 15 years since I got baptized. Well, why is that? We control that. We can tap into that. We can sing. We can pray. We can just have regular conversation. We can do that with the Lord. I didn't know that because no one instructed you in the language of God. I didn't know that everyone as a disciple was called to baptize, to lay hands. I just thought you had to be titled and licensed at a church to do that. No, that's not the case. And the reason why you think that is because no one's instructed you in the language of God. I didn't know that the Lord actually speaks to us. I, I I, I'm not able to hear his voice because you don't speak his language. This is why instruction is so important. And, and you can only get this type of instruction in, in intimate encounters. I, I can't drill down this deep from the pulpit in preaching to 100 people once a week. I, I can't drill down because I'm, I'm not going to answer any questions. <laughs> So if you're confused, you're going to walk away confused. And that's going to be that. Especially if no other aspect of the church's program, Sunday school, Bible study, if it's not interconnected, if there's not an ability for you to be like, Pastor, you said this on Sunday. I'm a little confused. Can you clarify? Let me go talk to my, my Sunday school teacher because I know that they, they're connected. They all speak the language of God. No, nah, you're just going to be confused. Andrew. Uh, I like the fact that you said language because um, from job, from, I went, I worked so many jobs and each job had its own different language. Mm -hmm. So as a bricklayer, I had to, during my interview, I had to explain what I, what it means to lay down the foundation or what it, how do I spread mortar onto the brick. It's, it's very different when I applied to go to school for coding. That's a whole nother language from Brickland. So I had to learn uh, uh, Java, JavaScript, and what is it, C-sharp? Something like that. I, it's, it's, it's another language. And the job I'm at now is a whole nother language. Like, if I explain some stuff to y'all, y'all wouldn't get or understand what I'm saying because it's what I'm dealing with and I'm used to it and I can display it and show them what I'm talking about because they, they will understand it versus if I show y'all, y'all be like, okay, what am I looking at? Because y'all haven't been taught these things, and so when you say language, and I'm and I'm actually thinking like, oh, speaking like a whole foreign language, because that's what it's gonna sound like to certain people—a whole foreign language. 
um, versus what you do marketing. Yeah. I wouldn't understand that. I never did it. Never took classes on it. I would just think like, oh, it's me promoting something that I'm dealing with. But it's way more to it. What you do? Car parts. I can't explain car parts. <laughs> but you can do. You can explain and tell what you can. You can tell me what you do in your job, and I'll be like, okay, what? What, what is that? Miko, you do your whole treasury baby. management. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you you can explain to customers what it is, and because they, I'm pretty sure they have customers. Okay, what am I looking at? Yeah. What am I going through? Like, oh, this is something simple. Just mean this. It's just a big word over it, and this is what it means. So, it, when you, when we say languages, it's 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 far more than just hearing what somebody's saying. Yep. It's actually knowing if, what, if we ask you something, can you explain this? In the, in the, can I see what you are? What you explain? It's like people don't teach this, and I'm glad that you said that because it, it is a whole other language. Because when I was telling somebody about God. They be like, well, what about such and such? I'm like, well, you got that from me. Mm -hmm. yep. Their interpretation. But what did the Bible actually say? How was it shown? How did they do it? Your 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 thought process saying we don't have to get baptized. Where did you read that? Right. You got that from men. You got it from probably from one passage anyway. When Paul said, I'm, I did not come to baptize, and that still don't say you we don't have to get baptized. Like your thought process all, is is functioning in. Focusing on man versus what God has in plan for us. So I'm glad that you said language. It's, no, oh, it's go ahead. weird form. No, I was gonna say, and that's our job as disciples as we're learning this, to open our mouths and speak truth. Truth is the word of God. So we can't be scared in situations like, oh, they're going down the wrong road. Oh well. <laughs> you know. Um, you know, unless the Lord tells you keep your mouth shut. Do as much as you can to teach the truth and try to bring light to that situation because you'll be sharing something. I guarantee ain't nobody else sharing with them. So, yeah. Division. People scared of division. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it's going to be confrontation in what you explain. And mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't like it. And like, I know it might be an awkward or weird conversation to have at the time, but it's going to it, what better time to happen now if, mm -hmm. if it's the right time to do it, I should say. I, mean, I was just telling um, Andrew and Rodeja were over my house yesterday. And I've been telling you guys about the person that I'm partnered with at work. I'll just say her name. Her name is Cheryl, so I can keep, you know, so you guys can know who I'm talking about. Um, and I know when she first started working at um, our company, she told me she wasn't religious and really didn't believe in God. And then I had told you some months later, she typed the I am and was like, God is good. And I was like, what? So we... Um, like, I fast a lot, and there's this Arabic um, lady, young girl, she's younger than us, she's like in her 20s. Um, according to their faith, they have to fast, Ramadan, stuff like that, mm -hmm. so she's been doing that. And then we got a newer member on our team, I think she's Hispanic, um, and so I think she was fasting too. So she's around all these people, and everybody on the team believes in something, whether it's the right thing, wrong thing, they believe in someone called God. She's the only one that had not been. So it's just interesting to see her progression. So um, I had been fasting due to my core situation. And then um, the Arabic girl was fasting for Ramadan. So we were all together one day. And so the Arabic girl was explaining, like, Ramadan, why they fast or whatever. So then Cheryl looked at me and was like, okay, why do you fast? So then I got a chance. Like, this is an opportunity to explain stuff. Um Maybe like the next day or so, Cheryl, me, and the, I think she's Hispanic, Hispanic chick, we all had lunch together. So um, when I sat down to eat, I was like, I don't know, it was just a habit. I just said it silently. Like, not silently, but I said it low. And Cheryl was like, you don't have to pray over your food low. You can speak out loud. And so I was just like, oh, okay, whatever. So... Um, once Latina came in, that's the one, I think she's um, Hispanic, I'm not sure. Um, she was like, um, so what do you believe? What are you? And um, I was like, I'm a disciple of Christ. Because I didn't want to say Christian because everybody, yep. it, that means nothing now. Yep. So she was like, oh, you're a Christian. I was like, yeah. And so then I just started, I'm like, all right, you opened this door. Mm -hmm. So then I started explaining what we believe. I said, we lay hands on the sick, we cast out demons, we water baptize in Jesus' name, we baptize in the Holy Spirit, we're speaking in tongues. She was like... You believe what I believe and put her hand up like that. And I was like, oh, so Cheryl's sitting here listening to this whole conversation. 
So now it's like she's being exposed, and it's like the Lord's like, do not hold back. Like, explain things. She's trying to understand. And one last thing I'll share is that we had another conversation with the Arabic lady, and she doesn't really understand what she believes. She knows it's culturally what they do, but so she was trying to explain what they do for Ramadan for fasting, and she was like, She's pretty much done because she started her cycle. And if you're a woman, you start your cycle. If you're breastfeeding or if you're pregnant, you don't have to fast. So we were like, oh, okay. So then she started explaining, well, they believe during Ramadan that the devil is locked up and that um, anything you do bad is of you. So let me backtrack a little bit. Two days ago, they had a rooftop celebration for people that took the retirement package. Mm -hmm. She told everybody when she first started, she doesn't drink and she's religious. She was drinking on the rooftop and said a curse word. So. Oh, she used profanity. Yeah, I'm sorry. She used profanity. So fast forward back to where we are. She's explaining, according to her faith, if you do anything bad, because this was during Ramadan, it is not the devil because he locked up. And that's not true. Because when she said it, Cheryl looked at me. And I saw Cheryl look at me because she tried to see what I, is this right? So it's, the whole thing was hilarious. So then I'm just looking, I stay looking at the Arabic chick because I'm like, I'm not doing this right now. This is not even true. But then she says, so it's, it's you if you do something bad. So Cheryl listening to understand, looked at the Arabic chick and said, oh, so when you was on the rooftop drinking and cussing, that was you. <laughs> That wasn't Ooh. the devil. I start cracking wow. up laughing. And I was and I said, yeah. So that was you, huh? Such and such. And the girl, her mouth just dropped open because she couldn't say nothing. You just told us this is what you believe. Mm -hmm. And so Cheryl looks at the Arabic chick and said, Tremiko's the only one left. Meaning she's Ooh. the only one left who doesn't cuss and doesn't drink and lives according to her faith. And I just start cracking up laughing. So she's getting this whole lesson about God just by us being who we are, but being open to explain, too, what it is that we truly believe. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that. Yeah. And, and so one thing I want to add is, like, so when we're talking about, like, I'm using, like, I'm saying the language of God. And I'm using that as an analogy to make it more easier to comprehend, right? Like, there is not some foreign language that God speaks that we are tapped into through some special anointing, right? Mm -hmm. And this is not up into interpretation or translation or different dialects or anything like that because we have people who will try to take it too far. Well, that's your interpretation. No. no. The reason why we know that the Lord, of the language that God speaks, his word is consistent and the same to everyone who plugs in through the Holy Spirit is when we look at the passage of Scripture. Because yeah. every single scriber was scribing the word of God and it is consistent through thousands of years. People who didn't even live at the same time, who've never had interactions, even if they did live at the same time, they were on opposite sides of the planet. And it's consistent. <laughs> and that's what we're talking about when it comes to instructing, is you getting and understanding the word of God and comprehending it by speaking his language. Let's look at what the actual Hebrew and Greek is used right here, and then plug it into context so you get the full picture of what God is trying to say. And to what Tremiko is using as an example is, is instruction, mm -hmm. right? So I'm, I'm living my life as a disciple, and you're asking questions? This is exactly what Paul did. Well, if you're going to open the door, I'm going to kick it in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you curious? Cool. I'm glad you asked. This is what I believe. This is how I know what it is is true. We see that in Acts when he went, he was going with the philosophers and it was given a title to every aspect of nature. And then they gave it to the unknown God in which they were talking about God. They were talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. But because they, I don't know his name, I'm not, we just going to call him unknown. And Paul was like, let me let me give you some game. Let me hit you to who you are talking about. Right. And that is what our job is as disciples. And we can't do that properly if we are not instructed in that. Like the way I am now in terms of my understanding of the word of God and how history relays itself through scripture and how we tie it back to the history that folks try to change or adapt to fit whatever perverted worldview they have of God. 
I wouldn't have gotten that if I didn't tap into the instruction of the Lord. And I forgot, too, the other key thing that happened during this discussion was that when we had the lunch, the, Cheryl, she looked at me and the one that said we believe the same thing. She was like, well, don't leave me out because I'm a believer. She's like, I do believe. <laughs> so she's come to the point now from not being religious and like, well, I do believe in God. She's not where we are and she knows that. But so and I don't know. This is just all really interesting because the Lord is showing me. If you just be who you are and stop trying to hide it, and if people ask you questions, like you say, kick that door in, and like, I'm going to give you everything. I'm not asking you to believe what I'm believing, but I'm going to explain it to you in such a way that you can understand it, then they'll go back home and start, hmm, hmm. So, yeah. And that is the process. It has to start with belief, right? I have to acknowledge yeah. God. That you exist and you are real. Yep. Before I can ever even begin the path to conversion. And so when she does convert, because she will. God. It's going to be about instructing. Now that you have been converted. Let me build you up so you understand the language of God. Because the, the, the point of discipleship, the point of this instruction is when you leave my purview. When you are no longer following me. Like Christ with the disciples. Well, I am, I'm about to go. I'm not going to be here in the flesh. Yeah. I have to make sure that you are prepared to carry on. And we see so many churches fail to do that. Fail. Young people raised up in the church, go off to college, lose their everlasting mind. Mm -hmm. But to go back, I mean, this is also, like, just thinking as we're talking about this. Because I, like... I don't know. Like, we know people watch us, but then you don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I'm not thinking nobody watching me at work. But for her to make that statement about the Arabic chick versus me, like, God is like, this is why it's so important that you really live an authentic life. Exactly. Because now if I go off and say a cuss word in the meeting or something, mm. then it's like, oh, we ain't got nobody on the team right. living right now. Because everybody else claiming to be Christian or believe, they use profanity. They say stuff that you shouldn't say. And this person... Not really being religious. Again, the person that you can't fool is a non-religious person. That's why it's tough when you go walk them streets. Because they can tell whether you are what you are. And for her to be non-religious and looking at everybody on the team saying that they believe in God. But you cause, you use profanity. You say stuff over here. The only person I see that's really living in life is Tremiko. So now let's say Satan just come in one day to try to get me off my rocker. And I'm like, alright, I'm about to just start cussing everybody out. I mean, and it's just so important. So going back to young people, that was one of the things that I know we encounter when we work with the teens. They would watch the adults and say, well, they're one way at home. Yep. They come to church, they're a whole nother way. I see this deacon being one way right here, but then I walk down the hallway and he thought nobody was down there and I saw him doing X, Y, and Z. So now it's like y'all hypocrites. Yeah. So when it comes to being a disciple of Christ, it's not only having that one-on-one -on -one contact with people or the group contact with people. What God is really showing me, it's also how you live your life because people are watching you at all times, whether you realize it or not. They're analyzing you. They're discerning you. They're trying to like find something critical to see if they can find anything wrong. And when you truly live your life the way you should, that is also another testament that can cause someone to maybe be like... Maybe this is real. Maybe he is legit and I should give it a shot. So I just want to say that to make sure, especially since we are all disciples and I know we're trying to go out and disciple people. Watch how you live your life. Watch the words that you speak. Watch all of that because it only takes for you to do one thing to lose your credibility and you are not getting your credibility back with that individual. It's done. So an instruction isn't just what I tell you to do, right? It's what I show you. Mm -hmm. So. Using the example of a skilled trade, if I'm a carpenter, a master carpenter, and I have an apprentice, I'm not just telling my apprentice what to do. And that apprentice, if they're smart, they're not just looking at the words coming out of my mouth. They're uh -huh. watching my hands. Yep. How, does, how does Donovan get prepared to do a job? What is he doing in between? How does he keep his skills sharp? What type of books is he reading? Mm -hmm. Right? I am literally following every single step because I want the results you have. Yep. Right? That's what we saw with... Elijah and Elisha. I want what you got. Yep. <laughs> so I'm not going nowhere. Yep. <laughs> Every place you go, I'm going to be right behind you. Mm -hmm. You getting on my nerves. Don't care. <laughs> 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 I'm 
I want what you got. Right? And that's how we should be as disciples. We should be so intent on, I am going to show you the way of God. Right? I'm going to live my life in accordance to what the Lord says. So you not only get my verbal instruction, but I show you how to live this life. And that is what a lot of saints struggle with. They have no one to show them. Show me how I study the word of God. Show me how I hear from God. Right? Show me how I walk this thing out. Because everyone else keeps talking about it, but they're failing. I don't want that life. Right? And we can say that about a lot of different things when it comes to our lives as disciples in God. I want a life of success. I want what Christ said he came to give. I want life and I want it more abundantly. You're the example that I have that is showing me that it's possible. The moment we as disciples fail, it's a shot to the credibility. Yeah. Well, I thought you, Trey, I thought you was the one. But if you can't make it, what hope do I have? And that's what people literally say. Literally. It's that crucial. And so that's why we have to be so cognizant about that. And we'll get into that in more detail, not today, but hopefully next week. Um, so let's move <laughs> to Greek now. So we're still talking about understanding. So the last one we talked about was sama, which was a verb in Hebrew. To hear, listen to obey, to hear with attention or interest. So now we're talking about Greek. Um, so <laughs> the word is nous, and it is a noun. <laughs> so it is, it is nous, and it is a noun. And it means the mind, compromising alike the faculties of perceiving and those of feeling, judging, determining. It is the intellectual faculty or competency, or skill set, that is a synonym for faculty, the capacity for spiritual truth, the skill of perceiving divine things, of recognizing goodness, get this, and of hating evil. So the, the Greek definition of understanding is recognizing goodness and hating evil. Like, that is literally in the definition. Let's go to Luke chapter 24, verses 44 through 45 in the New King James Version. So that is Luke chapter 24, verse 44 through 45 in the New King James Version. I'm going to repeat the definition. Um, So, nous, N-O-U-S, it is a noun for understanding. It is Greek. And its definition means the mind. So understanding, it, it is the mind. Compromising alike the faculties or the uh, proficiencies or the skills of perceiving and those of feeling, judging, determining. The intellectual skill set, the capacity for spiritual truth, the faculty of perceiving divine things, of recognizing goodness, and of hating evil. All right, let's look at Luke chapter 24, verse 44 through 45 and the New King James Version. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he, he being Christ, opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. What this is saying is Christ literally gave them the capacity for comprehending that everything that you have been taught and raised on as a Hebrew boy to a Hebrew man points to me. This is why it's so important to instruction, right? So when we're talking about, perfect example, speaking with people who believe that God is three. The Lord needs to open up your capacity to understand. Because we literally, this is literally what Christ is doing right here. Everything you disciples as Hebrews have literally been raised on. The law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, the Torah, that is literally your culture points to me in terms of the manifestation 
I am literally the word manifested in flesh. Christ, I don't get what you're saying. I'm going to open your understanding. I'm going to give you the capacity to receive what I am telling you and then to be able to comprehend the scriptures. I get it now. So when we're talking about understanding, it is literally, it literally comes from God. It is in the Greek. It is the capacity for me to comprehend spiritual truth. So when I'm talking to a disciple, when I'm instructing someone, you're not going to understand everything today. And that is okay. There are some things that are going to be revealed to you over time. And that is okay. There are some things that you are going to understand today, but realize that you are only on level one 10 years from now when it gets brought up again and you get further revelation. So don't get frustrated. Don't get annoyed. This doesn't mean the Lord doesn't love you. This doesn't mean that you are not walking in him. Capacity is increased over time. You got to build up to it. You are not ready to receive everything right now. You wouldn't know what to do with it if you did. But if I'm not instructing someone who, who, who I'm discipling in that, they are going to get frustrated. Shemiko, I'm just not getting it. Is it me? Like the Lord is not speaking to me. I'm not hearing him clearly. You've been here for 30 days, babe. Yeah. <laughs> like, slow down. Slow down. Slow. Relax. <laughs> Relax. This is a lifestyle. And that is legit because as I have been discipling people, they have been getting frustrated. Like, well, I'm not, you know, here or whatever. And that is our job to be like, no, you're right where you should be. You're doing well. Just yeah. keep afloat. Keep doing what you're doing because you, you don't know what you don't know, right? And as you're learning as a student, you may think you should be further along than you are or you're repeating the same thing over and over. So is this wrong? And it's like, no, that's what a life of God is, is repetition of following his word. And it kind of seems like you're spinning your wheels, but you're not. But yeah, so that's our job is to kind of be the coach and to help them see, okay, you're doing well, especially when they're doing well, because they don't know that they're doing well if they are, unless someone lets them. So that's definitely spot on because that's what I've been experiencing discipling people. So. And that's the point of instruction, right? So if I'm, a, if I'm a, a physical trainer, right, before we get to any heavy exercise, we're going to work on form. Yeah. And I remember when I was playing football, there would be weeks in training camp where all we did was techniques. I would be so annoyed. Like, can we please hit somebody? Like, right? Can we just shoot? I don't even like running, but I would, let's run. Like, let's different. do something different. <laughs> And all we would do is work on form and work on technique. This is how you tackle. This is how you wrap up. This is how you turn when you wrap up. This is the angle that you want to, I mean, repeat, repeat, repeat. Why? Because when it's game time, you ain't got time to think. So I need to make this muscle memory. And the only way to get into muscle memory is vigorous repetition. And it's the same thing with a physical trainer, right? Before we start throwing up 250 pounds on the bar... We're going to work on this 45-pound bar. It, this is how you bench press. This is how you properly squat. This is where you want your knees and your shoulders to be. So then when you come up, because why? One mistake can hurt you. Right? You, you, take, you bite off more than you can chew. And we're talking about a debilitating injury. And it's the same thing with God. If I give you more than you are ready for, I am doing you a disservice. I'm setting you up for failure because now you're gonna get your head gonna get big. You're gonna think you know a little something. You're gonna start smelling yourself, and you're gonna get out there. And we all know what Scripture says: come before pride, right? Destruction. What comes before a haughty spirit? The fall. No, take your time. Don't get frustrated. Don't get frustrated. And I tell so many people, how I teach now was not how I taught in 2013. We're literally talking about a decade. And, there it's, and I still feel like some days where I'm still at the base of the mountain. <laughs> like I haven't even begun my climb yet. Why? Because the Lord is, I'm teaching you technique. I'm teaching you technique. Because when you do begin this climb, now you don't have to think about, well, am I doing this right? Because that's where doubt come in, right? That's where second guessing. That's when you start saying stuff crazy because you get a little confused in the moment. Guilty of that. Happened last week. We all are. <laughs> 
So this is what instruction is to what Tremiko is. I'm level setting. You only been at this for a year. This is a journey. This is a lifestyle. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to get you here for a year. I want to make sure 50 years from here, you're still walking with the same level of conviction. Yeah. Right? But you're wiser. You're bolder. You're more skillful. You're more proficient. Yeah. That's the goal. Right? I see you making steps. That's it. And this, that's one thing I had to learn. Like when I came out of my backslidden state and was like, Lord, I'm living for you. I mean, revelations, bop, 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 bop. Like, I was just in it. Like, oh, yeah, got it, got it, got it. And then I hit this plateau. And I was so frustrated. Because I'm like, Lord, the past three months, I was, I was in the secret place. We was here. It was so clear. Every single thing that was you was giving me. Like, why? And now I'm, I'm in this, I'm spinning. Like, you know, like when you're trying to pull, pull up a browser, and, it, and, and spinning, I'm plateauing. It's like, it's so hard now. And the Lord was like, because I'm, I'm increasing your capacity. See, I was, I was spoon feeding you. Now we get into, you got to come to me. You got to dig deep. You got to seek. You got to fast. You got to pray. Because every revelation is not just going to come to you overnight. I'm not going to spoon feed you everything. You want to know the deepness of God? You're going to have to dig for it. But if I have not taught you how to do that, if I have not instructed that chill out, some things from God take years for you to get. Because he has to open your capacity. And trust me, I've tried. You're not rushing him. Not at all. <laughs> he does not operate on your schedule. But that's the point of instruction, right? And we see so many. And Tremiko, she's talking about the disciples who are, who are operating, right? Who are like, yeah, like this is the lifestyle I want to live. We see so many saints in the church that just fall away simply because it's, I'm not getting it. I don't understand. This don't make no sense. I haven't seen an example, a successful example of somebody walking this out. Why do I, why should I waste my time? Exactly. Right? The person who brought me to get baptized, they talking about they've been saved for 20 years. I just found out that they pregnant. Well, <laughs> what's the point? Yep. You've been in this for 20 years and you, what's the point? I'm not about to waste 20 years of my life. <laughs> but so many people miss it. Like, it's, as a disciple, and when it comes to instruction, I'm going to say it, and I'm going to clean it up. Your life is not yours anymore. The moment that you become a saint, you are called to discipleship. It is a commandment. Your life no longer belongs to you. It sucks. I, some days, I'm going to just be transparent. I hate it. I can't stand it. Because living for others is difficult. But that is what discipleship is. That is what instruction is to what Tremiko said. I got to make sure I stay on my P's and Q's because they clock me. Mm-hmm. And if I, if I mess up, and that's what a lot of spiritual leaders don't have in their mind, my mess up is not in a silo. It is not singular. If I fall, a hundred fall with me. That is part of the instruction. Is my, my lifestyle is part of the instruction. It is a huge responsibility. It is a great weight. But guess what? Oh, well. Suck it up. Why? Because this is what Christ was talking about when he said, add up the cost. Your life is no longer yours. Jesus is saying, your mind's now. <laughs> <laughs> your tail belongs to me. And that comes with expectation. And that expectation is you got to live for others. I have to follow Christ as other people follow me. My life is not my own anymore. And so many spiritual leaders do not realize that, especially spiritual leaders who are tasked with shepherding young folk. If you fall, the flock falls with you. It ain't just, well, I'm, I'm only human and I made a mistake. I get it, but the, the, the stakes of the game are higher than that. And I have seen spiritual leaders who I'm close and dear with not comprehend that. And then they got an attitude like, Donovan, you act like you're so holier than that. It's not about that. You don't get it. You think it's just about your mistake? I'm not thinking about you. I'm thinking about the 30 people you were leading. Young, impressionable minds. 
that are going through the hardest part of growing up, their teenage years. And especially in this generation where sin is abound and worshiped and glorified. And they have access to the world 24-7. Yeah. Access to porn, access to sex, access to drugs. It has never been this hard to live for Christ. In terms of just a care of what you have access to. Of course, we know we're not getting our heads chopped off, thank God. We're not getting thrown in the ring with rings with lions. But our saints of yesterday also didn't have people sending them nudes. <laughs> Right then and there. Come get it. <laughs> Sensory overload. Yeah. If they wanted to send, they had to travel. <laughs> you can pull up a porn video yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. You can use Tinder and get a hookup like that. You can go on the dark web and get drugs delivered to your house. Expedited. Two-day shipping. <laughs> so, like, that, that's why it annoys me when spiritual leaders, they mess up. And I, I get it. Right, well, they shouldn't put me on a pedestal. It, they don't have you on a pedestal. You're their anchor. Yeah. You're the link. Yeah. You brought me here. You told me at 17 I needed to be saved. You told me at 21 that I can't be getting drunk and I shouldn't be foreign. You, and now all of a sudden you want a mulligan? Yeah. No. I think, um, too, to help with the weight of that, it's, I always say this, everything is about perspective, how you see things. And... The perspective that God showed me and gave me, and this is how I choose to view it, is that it's an honor for me to be able to hold this seat, to be able to hold this position, to be able to hold this status in this kingdom, to be an influence for people. And so because that is an honor, I have to value that. I have to be responsible with that, and I have to be accountable for that. Um, let's, Let's think of who we're talking about. We're talking about God of the entire universe he's the king of kings he's the lord of lords and he chose me to hold this position because nobody else could have given it to me so that in in itself is like we always live life right and we want someone to choose us whether it's in a relationship whether it's in a job situation you want the powerful person to be like yeah i want you to be my right hand like everybody wants that to some degree And in actuality, it's like you got it, but then you don't value it. So that's the way I choose to look at it. And it really helps me to stay accountable. It really helps me to not fall. Because like you say, that's the thing. Satan knows with every person that has some type of influence with someone, all the people you influence, if I can get you to fall, I can get the thousand, the million, the ten, the two that's following you, they're all going to be gone too if they're not strong. So... I think we need to start viewing it that way, yeah. that, you know, it is an honor, it is a privilege to be able to hold such um, uh, a place in God's kingdom and then act accountable. But when you don't value that, that's when you start to see, you know, people falling and making the excuses, I'm only human. And it's just like, show me where any disciple or apostle ever preached that. They never did. They always focus on come out of sin. They never focus on the fact that, you know, you may see it. No, it was always come out. Because if you if we start preaching them messages, then that's going to always be in the back of your head. Well, I'm going to sin. So, um, and it's just, it's just interesting because when you start to look at how those he originally chose to start this whole movement called the church, let's go back to that and follow that. Let's go back to that and make sure our messages are in sync with that. And too many people have gotten far, far, far away from that. And that's where we're seeing the mess that we see. But we're also in an age where God is trying to clean that up. And I think that's also another honor and privilege to be born during a dispensation where he's like, I got to throw all of this away. And all of you that are not with us, that are in this system, come out and let's start going back to what I originally so, like, it's all an honor and a privilege if you really choose to have that perspective. That's all God gave me to say. And it's and truthfully, with everyone wants to be trusted with the most important job. Yeah. Right? Very few people, when it comes to power, influence, money, whatever 
tangible thing you want to put to yeah. it. I'm like, nah, give me the least influential. Like, I don't want no voice. I don't want nobody. No very, voice. it is very rare. Because I'm not going to say never. Because, yeah. you know, you got some trifling folk who are like, yeah. I don't want nobody <laughs> asking me for nothing. But in the vast majority of people, right, I, I want to be in the limelight. Yeah. I want to be front row. Yeah. And to what Chimiko said, it is a privilege. It is an honor for the Lord to look at you and be like, Trey, I trust you. Yeah. Go for it. Andrew, I trust you. Go for it. Charlene, I trust you. Go for it. And we have to put, we got to understand, like, okay, that trust is coming with, I'm about to be connected to other people that if I falter, if I slip, it is not going to be in isolation. It is a domino. So when I see pastors of churches numbering in the thousands, cheating on their wives, like, do you think that is inconsequential? Really? Like, you really think it's about to be like, oh, you know, pastor so-and-so failed, but nobody else in this church. No. Two things are going to happen. Folks are going to give up because they're going to look at you. Well, if my example can't do it, why yeah. should I? Yeah. Or they're going to be like, well, this, must, this type of behavior must be condoned in the body of Christ. Yep. So I can do it too. Either way, Satan wins. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And that, that's the stakes that we're talking about. So as we continue talking about instruction, one, it is, it is, it is about how we present ourselves, right? It is, not, it is the nonverbal and the verbal. It is our body language. It is our lifestyle. It is how we interact with others, interact with folks who do not have the same level of power and influence that we have. In, like, it, all of it is important yes. and we have to understand is our roles as disciples is I am literally showing you the way to God like that that is my job as a disciple is to show you to God and I have to understand the weight and the expectations that come with that and I cannot treat it lightly and I'm going to instruct you with the same mindset I'm going Christ route hey before you make this decision doc Count up the cost. Oh, you want to be an apostle? Hmm. Think about it. Take a second. Right? Because we always think about the benefits, the pros. People going to know my name. I'm going to get flown out. I'm going to have da 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 Okay. Paul, every single day, his life was one of, of war. <laughs> Both spiritually and physically. I am fighting daily. As a teacher, I got to study. Y'all on the weekend just hanging out? I got my Bible broken up. I got to find time to slot it in. When I would rather just be sitting on the couch watching TV with everybody else, I got to be off. Right? There, these, we have to count up the cost. And once you make that decision, make it in knowledge, make it in understanding, make it in wisdom, I'm, I'm going to walk you down that path so that then you can go on and you can disciple another team. And we can just continue to build this thing. All right. Any last minute thoughts, questions, or comments? All right. And says, Lord, we just thank you for a great discussion. Lord, we just thank you for all of the examples that were given in the conversation that had and the questions and answers that we received that we all um, would grow more efficient. We would grow better as disciples, as iron sharpens iron, that we would all continue to grow in our own capacity. And you, Lord, I just pray that everyone would have a great rest of their day, um, that we would all enjoy, you know, time with our family or activities or, you know, going out to eat, whatever we are doing, that you would be with us, Lord, um, and that we would all be able to get rest um, as we begin our week uh, on Monday, Lord. And we just give you all the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen.